Let me show you how to troubleshoot almost anything in GDevelop. So to begin with, there's two kinds of problems that you probably want to troubleshoot. An issue where something is happening and you don't want it to anymore, or an issue where you're trying to do something and it's not working. So I have two different scenes set up for this. The first problem here is this platformer character, and I'll show you what's going wrong. So when the game plays, and I go up to a wall, when I turn, I will jump off of the wall. That's not what I want to happen. I don't want my character jumping off a wall accidentally. So I need to break down what the problem is and figure out how to solve it. The things impacting the character is firstly the fact that it's a sprite object, then the behaviors attached to it, in this case it's the platformer behavior and the smooth camera extension, and these events. And those are the only things impacting this character. So where I will usually begin is with the events. So to begin with, the camera is probably not impacting this mechanic, but the animations could be. So we'll disable these and test it out. And it's still happening. So then we go down the list. I've given it custom controls so I can control it with the A and D key and made it so that it jumps every frame. So let's see if changing that will fix it. I need to disable these controls, go back to the player character and in the behavior turn back on default controls so I can move it with the arrow keys and spacebar. And now the only thing that's happening is the characters being flipped when the arrow keys are moving. So then the last thing to try is to disable the flipping. And now we'll try again. And nothing's happening. So the issue is with the flipping. So that's the first and most important part about troubleshooting is trying to figure out what exactly it is that is causing the problem. So now that I've figured that out, I'll turn all of these back on and turn off default controls and try again. So it is definitely the flipping that is causing the problem. And now I do want my character to be able to flip, so what else could that be? Well, when the character flips, it's the points and the collision mask that get flipped as well as the image. So that's the next place to look. Nothing else gets impacted by the flipping, so one of those two things have to be the problem. Now the points are just, all there is is the center point and the origin. So there can't be a problem there really. But for the collision mask, I've made a custom collision mask that fits the object, where the collision mask is actually off-center. And because it's off-center, when the character flips, this back end clips into the wall, which makes the platform behavior see that it's inside of a platform, which makes it think it can jump. And so when the character is flipping, we're clipping into the wall, and the character is able to jump again. So to fix that, we need to make sure these are even. So let me quickly fix that. All right, and now I'm gonna test it out. Can I flip off the wall again? Oh, no. I need to re-enable these events. And no, I cannot jump off the wall anymore. So the issue was that the collision mask was flipping and clipping into the wall. Now that the collision mask is the same on either side, when it flips, it's not going to do that. Great, so that's one part of troubleshooting. Turning off the events until we find the one that's causing the issue, and figuring out what that issue is tied to. Now the second one I want to show you is going to be a little more advanced. So I have an event here that is checking to see if the distance from a coin is less than 20 pixels. And if it is, it'll pick that coin, delete it, add it to the scene variables, create particles, and then change the coin text to show that it's happened. But that's not happening. So the first thing I want to do is move these down and disable them. 
just to see if the actions are working, and the actions are working fine. You can see the score is going up once per frame, particles are being spawned, and all of the coins have been deleted. So then, we'll try each condition. Nope, that's not working. That did work 24 times, so it kept picking all of the ones around that were closest and deleting them. But when we move these together again, it's not working. So either this condition is not right, or there's something wrong with the ordering of these events. So let's go into the debugger and see just how many of these things are being picked. The debugger is a really handy tool. Here we go, let's shrink this down. And now, let's talk about the debugger really quickly. The inspector, I can press refresh, and I can go to the global variables, see all of them, check on the scene that's playing. I can see the scene variables that are happening. Right now, the number for coins picked up is zero. So we have zero on the screen. Shows me the number of gold coin instances in the game. And then I can go through each one to find out where it is. And then coins is just the text object. And I can even change the position by going in and editing these numbers. So the inspector is a really useful tool for fiddling around with your game live. Let's change this back to zero. And then, let me go to the event sheet, add a new event, look for console as an action, and then in the message to log section, I'm going to write in picked instances. Here we go, coins. And press OK. Great, so every frame I'm going to check and see how many of the coins are picked. If you don't know what object picking is, you should really watch our object picking video. Basically, you need to pick an object before you can apply actions to it. So if we don't have any actions picked, so if we don't have any coins picked, we can't do anything to them. So now let's go start the debugger. And down here in the console section, we can see what this action is doing. So it's logging the message in the console, and we can find that right here. So the number we're getting is zero because zero coins are being picked, which means as much as I'm waving my cursor around to try to select these coins, none of them are being picked in the first place, so we can't actually do anything to them. So we need to fix that. And the issue for this one is the actions are working, this condition's working, this one might be wrong, but we know that the issue is picking. So pick the gold coin nearest to the cursor is not in the right place in the order because it's doing this and then trying to pick. So there's no coins being picked. So if we move that one above and press update, when I move my cursor next to these coins, they're being picked. And if I go to the debugger again and check the console, on the frame that the coins get destroyed, this might be hard to see, down here, it's going to click over to one. Oh, no, it's not. Because it's getting picked and then deleted. So that's not gonna happen. If we move this into this condition and have it log before it deletes the coin, then if we go to the debugger, then we'll see the one. So there we go. Now we know the issue was the ordering of the conditions because we figured out that we're trying to pick a coin, but no coin was ever being picked. So this was the issue. And now something else I wanna show you is this last part of the debugger. Make it small. I can start profiling. So if I click on this and then wait for 10 seconds, and press stop profiling. It collected information for the past 600 frames, and I can see just how much time is being taken up by the objects and events per frame. So this is a useful tool for finding out when something is lagging in your game or something is being too heavy. You can check your objects pre-events, so the objects themselves, and then you can check how much of a drain each individual component is. And then if we go down, we can do this for layer effects, 
objects with effects, other extensions, and then the rendering as a whole. Right now we're just seeing those things, but if I go into the event sheet for that scene, and I put things into a group, and I call this controls, if I update this, go to the debugger, restart the profiling, and stop. I didn't get the full 600 frames, but I want to show you how this works. I now have a section for events and controls. That control group that I put here is now in the debugger. So I can see how much of a drain these controls are having on my game. How much time it takes per frame to compute these events. And I can do that for every single section here. Restart the profiler, and I will see there's events, there's my animation group, there's my control group, and there's my flip group. And since I wasn't flipping the character, and I wasn't using the controls, then neither of those are taking up any time in the actual events, or any significant time in the actual events. Whereas if I restart this and move the character around, and then stop profiling, You'll see these numbers have changed. This now takes up a 0 0.01 millisecond time frame and has moved up to 25% of the overall drain my events are having on the game. Hopefully seeing this troubleshooting in action will help you with troubleshooting your own games.